Was good, yeah. So last summoning is tomorrow and I hope every one of you is already clear on if you want to summon tomorrow or on Friday. If not, feel free to check out my latest video if you still need help deciding. And on that note, let's talk about the topic here, which is going to be how effective are Lust's Awakenings actually? And can you just stop after getting her after, uh, on 250? As well as also, <laughs> just as a little uh, extra, I guess, we're going to have a look at the difference between A0 and A5 Arrogance also then obviously in comparison with Lust. But enough said, let's get straight into it and keep it simple. So we're just going to start off with the test here. We're going to use pretty much meta comp, so hollow and laurel, as well as obviously Dolores for our attack boost, uh, Wrath as the Lord bonus, and obviously Volca to cut down um, to cut down on respawn requirements for laurel. Furthermore, as you see in the fight, and also you should know about Lust, is that. Uh, she actually has a talent, and that talent states for every two ultimates activated by faction allies of the Nightmare Council, including the hero, the hero will then trigger Sinful Lash, which is a pretty powerful attack dealing 400% damage to a random enemy, which obviously helps with the attack. So we're going to have Wrath and Arrogance on the field. Not just because of her talent, but mainly because we want to fill out the four Nightmare Faction speed buff, as well as not having a good platform unit that is actually from the Nightmare Council besides Hudson. But then again, you don't have a lot that's not on the ground, but I guess you'll see it in a bit. So what we're going to do is we're going to go in, do the fighting for A0 together, and then obviously again swap to a PowerPoint in which I'm going to uh, show you the results for A1 through 5, as well as then obviously Arrogance's results. And I think it's going to be at least a bit surprising. At least that's... Uh, that was my impression, I guess. So we're going to start off with Laurel to give an invigoration buff to Hex. Uh, I don't have an invigoration set on Lunaria, so Silas is unboosted, even though I'm going through the mo motion of boosting him. And we're just going to bring in the rest. We're going to bring in Lust. Lust, again, close to Laurel, so we're playing her at max potential, so cycling her ultimate as much as possible. We're bringing in Volka, who has an invigoration set to boost Lust, so Lust has an Invigoration set, and then we just follow it up with Arrogance and Wrath. And the important part here is Arrogance and Wrath are going to go through their ultimates, and every two ultimates Lust is going to trigger her Sinful Lash, which also is going to be quite important when we're going to talk about her A1, but that's, uh, I guess, for the future. So here, just uh, I'll just talk a bit about why I'm triggering certain stuff where. We're just going to trigger Hex's ultimate early because Hex's ultimate is pretty, pretty long. And then at this point, we can already start. Uh, I could have activated Tolo's ultimate earlier. I did wait here a bit, but honestly, it's not too bad. And then by around 97% of the Loris, we can already start with activating Lust and activate Silas because they do take at least a bit of time to activate, as well as giving them the chance to get the 20% damage buff from Laurel. And also activate the ultimate so we can overcharge the rage through Laurel, which is what we're uh, what we're doing right here. And then taking out Laurel, letting the fight go, and obviously starting to hit the boss. So because we did you remove Laurel after all ultimates were activated, we're going to start with around 80% rage on everyone. Activate Laurel again, and then just start the second row of ultimates. And here you could. Bring in Volca, but I don't usually bring in Volca here because unless you specifically build for it, your Volca is not going to be able to use her ultimate within 20 seconds, which would mean you place her down and need to remove her because you do want to bring Laura in as soon as possible to then take her out again, which is why we're now going to bring in Volca. Again, wait until we're at around 97% to then start with both ultimates. And then also keep an eye on Hex. Now the interesting part about Volker is you only need to trigger her ultimate. And as soon as she's triggered, she's going to apply this uh, vulnerability you can see on the top here. And this buff doesn't actually disappear if you despawn Volker. So as long as you trigger it, you can then despawn Volker, which is going to cut down on her respawn timer. And if you cut down on her respawn timer, you can put her on the field more often. And if you have her on the field more often, you're going to get a bit more value out of her when it comes to the invulnerability buff. So right here, we're going to trigger Dolores. And actually, wait. 
So my general rule is if you're anywhere closer than really 40% to triggering ultimates, I always wait with my Laurel, trigger the ultimates first because you can only over cap if the ultimates are already triggered, which is the case right now. So I waited with putting in Laurel to then over cap the ultimates again instead of going in and only getting 20% out of a possible 50% when it comes to the rage region. So right over here, we should again have enough time to bring in Volker and then take her out again before we actually need to place Laurel. Here we can just trigger the ultimates again. So the the interesting part or, or the important part about the gate boss strategy right here is the fact that you do need... So if your gear isn't good enough, you can't quite trigger it exactly with this timing because your units are going to end up failing at the shield. So depending on how good your gear is, you might need to already slow down your timings at the second shield or potentially at the third shield so you can ensure that you actually break the shield instead of the dragon breaking you, I guess. <laughs> so yeah, you gotta, you gotta really tone down the timings a bit depending on your gear. But besides that, that's... And pretty much no matter really how bad your gear is, you can always just use it on Nightmare 3 and then get a better score on Nightmare 3 in comparison to Nightmare 4 if the shields are really the problem. Because you can see it's not it's not that safe that we're clearing the shields even though we are using everyone at A1 but we're using really really good gear. And on the note of gear, I'll obviously show you the gear that we have had that we have used on Lust in just a bit before I do actually forget about it. So again right here we are at around 70% ultimate so you could activate Laurel or you couldn't but it's pretty much closer to 80% so I'm just going to keep Laurel on the field way to activate the ultimates and then in hopes of actually being able to trigger the ultimates twice instead of just a single time which isn't uh, I'm actually going to wait for Dolores. So the part with Dolores is she's going to go for 20 seconds. And most of the time, if you do have a Rage Union unit on the field, if you take out Laurel while your Dolores is active, you should be able to trigger her instantly after. So what that allows us to do is have 40 seconds uptime of Dolores instead of just 20 seconds. And that's what we're going to go with. So here we go. Perfect cast as well as sprinkling in that Volker. Uh, which we could already take out, but honestly, there's no real point to doing so. But apparently, gear-wise, someone isn't geared. I'm guessing... I don't know. Who could be ungeared? I'm guessing Arrogance. <laughs> I'm guessing Arrogance wasn't geared for this one, or at least it was the wrong one in. Let's have a look at the damage. Luckily, it was Arrogance, so Arrogance number isn't important. The important part is last number right here, which is 104 million, which obviously fluctuates quite a bit, which is what you're going to see in just a second. But let's first go over her gear. So we were able to break 100 million, but at least in this meta comp, you can't expect like super high Zillow 2 numbers from her you're going to see something close to 100 million, which obviously isn't bad. But if you take a look at the stats right here, we have, again, the usual around 210, 220% attack, 334 attack speed, 100% crit rate, and a massive 230% crit damage, as well as a 25 maxed out rent here. I would have liked to give you an answer on how good Lust's exclusive artifact is, but... We don't actually have it on the test server, so I can't test it out. I can't tell you, is it better, is it worse than a RAM tier, at which tier it's better. As soon as I know that, as soon as we get it on the test server, I'll obviously test it out for you and tell you at what stage exactly it becomes better than options for Lust. And also once Lust is properly released and you do want to see it, I'll make a proper Lust how to gear guide, uh, how to build that wise, best artifact obviously, and then in which kind of content you can use it once everybody really is able to get their hands on her. So yeah, that's been it in regards to the test right here. Now let's have a look at the A1 real quick, which is very important. Sinful Lash. Sinful Lash is the ability she activates if other Nightmare Faction units, obviously including her, but also besides her trigger their ultimates. So the more Nightmare units you have on the field, the more often you're going to trigger Sinful Lash. But the important part about this A1 right here is, it is only 5 seconds and you're not going to trigger 
to Nightmare Faction Ultimates that often, so the uptime of the defense reduction isn't going to be that high, which is why this whole A1 seems greater than it actually is. But enough of that, let's get into the actual data in regards to the awake. Here we are and here we go. How good are Lust Awakenings actually? The answer is quite surprising, I guess. So Lust at base dealt 106 million. Like I said, it's like a bit variance. We had like 104.6, but it's pretty much similar. Then at A1, we only saw an increase of 5 million, which comes out to around 5%, which is again playing into the fact that she's only applying defense down. And there's, there's two things to keep in mind. For gate boss, the gate boss already has pretty low defense. So the impact of defense down isn't as big as in other content, as well as obviously it only triggering if you have nightmare units to go alongside of her. But furthermore, it isn't just a boost for her damage. You can expect this about this damage increase on every one of your units, which makes this damage increase higher or this one as kind of a misinterpretation in comparison to how much she actually boosts. So you can expect between like a one and five million boost for all your other units alongside of her because they are also going to benefit from the occasional 20% defense down. Now the A3, what does the A3 even do? Let's actually have a look at the A3 again and then get right back here. So what does her A3 even do? Upon reaching full ecstasy stacks, gain an additional 20% attack speed. Now you might be wondering what is ecstasy stacks? Ecstasy stacks are a stack of increased attack speed she gets every time Sinful Lash is triggered. So as long as she triggers her talent three times or in general six Nightmare Faction units ultimates are triggered she's going to get an additional 120 attack speed and on awakening 3 20 percent additional attack speed at this time i can't actually tell you what kind of attack speed this is so if it's 120 and then 20 percent of that which is also which would only be coming out to around plus 24 so 144 total but i also doubt that it is like her total attack speed so for example you have her at 334 attack speed as we have here and then you would, for example, we have her at uh, around 1.4 seconds. With the additional 120 from her passive, she should go down to, to around 1.3 seconds at a total of plus 450. And then if you take 20% of 450, there would be an additional 90 attack speed, which should keep her somewhere in the 1.3, potential 1.2, which is one of the options that it is and i think it's more likely that it's going to be total attack speed instead of just a 24 attack speed because honestly that isn't too much but uh let's get back to the numbers so yeah for the numbers as you can see the damage increase was a total of 9 million or in comparison to uh a0 she's dealing about 20 percent more so from last a0 to last a3 it's about a 20 percent increase but here comes the big part. From A3 to A5, Lust actually increases her damage by an additional 60 million or a total of 83.9% roughly in comparison to A0. So you might be wondering, oh, what is this A5? For that, again, let's go straight back into last skit have a quick look so her a5 says that during the ultimate the basic attempt lacks uh, the basic attack lands six lashes in a row instead of four so normally she uh, increases her own damage by 40 percent and then deals four lashes in a row lasting for 20 seconds now she did six as well as during the ultimate if you have an arrogance it's not a 40 percent multiplier but a 60 percent one through the bond skill so she's just going to hit more, be able to hit allies more, which works quite well with her passive. That gives her a damage increase if she hits allies through this one, giving her 30% extra. And in total, honestly, my, my verdict about this whole shenanigan here is really A5 is super strong. Like the jump from A0 to A5 is really significant. But at the end of the day, who can realistically get A5 anyway? Because honestly, I don't even think it matters. So 
realistically speaking, if you can get the A1, it's going to be nice. It's going to be good for your team, but you shouldn't feel forced to go for the A1 because the benefit isn't too big, as well as the A3 also isn't overwhelming for the fact that you need a four times. And then an additional two times gives you that massive boost, but at an 18% chance to summon her, let's say you do take five times every time, then to get her actually six times, you need to summon her 30 times. 30 times, which is obviously absolutely ridiculous, which makes this A5 either a soulstone project or absolute way in mania. But honestly, if you're at the point of having A3 last, uh, A5 last, you're going to be dealing 70k at gate boss anyway. So honestly, don't worry about the A5. It's some whale-ish territory. A1 is nice. A3 is whatever. And A5 is ridiculous. Now onto the note of another ridiculous A5. Let's go on to candidate number two, Arrogance and Arrogance A5. So a base Arrogance deals around 118 million in the same team comp and the same gear we've used before, obviously also with a ram tier. So he does about 10%, 10, 15% more damage than a Lust would do. So if you happen to have A0 Lust, A0 Arrogance, both max skilled, run your Arrogance next to your Rage Region comp instead of Lust, you're going to get more damage out of it. And furthermore, if you do get him to A5, you can expect around 166 million damage on a Wrath. So the important part also for Lust is it was ran, or the team comp was with a Wrath, you're probably going to see even crazier numbers with a Torador, because Lust is going to hit six times, or those six times have the chance to trigger Torador's talent to give her an extra hit which is quite ridiculous so with Torador she's probably going to pull even greater numbers but I mean honestly A5 Torador uh, just Torador and A5 Lassa is ridiculous but back to the task at hand which is going to be you're going to see around a 33% increase when it comes to damage if you do happen to have an arrogance A5 so you can see kind of that the jump between last A0 and last A5 is bigger than between arrogance and arrogance A5 and honestly I think this already concludes this one I wish you all best of luck and if you want to feel free to tune in for tomorrow's summoning session and on that note, if anyone still wants me to summon for you or even hop into a call with me and stream your summons, link in the Discord, top channel, and you can already still send a message there if you're interested in letting me summon for you. And besides that, I, I hope you appreciate this one. As always, leave a like, leave a sub, leave a comment, do whatever. Let's not get passed by Destin War and subscribers, and we see each other in the next one.